Nvidia gets thwarted. The PSVR 2 looks immaculate and Bethesda says goodbye. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And just before we get into the hot news, don't forget that we have our weekly meme review over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple happening now as this video goes live 9 a.m. Eastern. Come join us over there in case you want to laugh at memes, rate them or just berate everybody else. I'd be glad to see you there, but NVIDIA won't be glad with this little driver hack that's happening because in case you aren't aware, NVIDIA released their LHR GPUs, which means that their light hash rate, they're not as good for mining because they were somehow trying to attempt miners to not buy these GPUs, even though it only limited them in very specific cryptocurrency algorithms and not in all of them. And in reality, all it did was harm the regular end consumer who wanted to potentially mine nice with nice hash while they're just trying to heat their house during the winter, not the people who are buying out gigantic Ethereum farms. But regardless, all right, it was reported at one point that the RTX 3060 got circumvented, but then they updated it so that it couldn't be circumvented anymore. But don't you worry, because there's a new circumvention that's out there that's circumcising all of the efforts that Nvidia has for getting their GPUs to not mine. The Nvidia RTX LHR V2 Unlocker by Sergey is a BIOS modification tool that unlocks your 30 series to perform at its peak mining in case that's something that interests you personally it interests me in you know me buying a piece of hardware and nvidia not limiting what i could potentially do with it that's more the stance that i take on this but the author of the tool says that you can get up to all of these mega hash numbers that are currently on the screen specifically the 3070 ti is pretty gosh dang nice but as is the case when it comes to any piece of rogue software that's out there especially one that requires you to modify the firmware of your bio which is a no-no, according to NVIDIA. Be wary, even though, you know, people might say it's safe, it could potentially uh, create some catastrophic ramifications down the line if there's any malware that potentially gets injected into the code or the code is malware itself. It's, you know, I'm not saying that it is, but when you're taking these kinds of risks, maybe or maybe not, it might not behoove you to actually do it unless you're really trying to drive those peak Ethereum numbers. So we'll leave links in the video description with regards to all of this in case you're interested in checking it out, but I just really think that NVIDIA probably made the wrong move when it comes to LHR. AMD not taking a stance of limiting what you can do with your graphics card just makes so much more sense to me. Intel's also kind of taking that stance. NVIDIA's move just feels like it was for in public, uh, just good sentiment, but in reality, it solved none of the problem and it just, it makes it so that the regular person is being told by NVIDIA what they can or cannot do with a multi hundred dollar purchase that they have, which I just particularly don't stand for. And what looks like it won't stand anymore is Samsung's yield numbers, at least reports that are coming out about Samsung and how they may have fabricated some of their fabrication numbers with regards to their three, four and five nanometer yields and that some of their employees may have just fudged the numbers a bit, which may have downstream supply chain ramifications where they were expecting a certain yield. They can't actually meet the forecast that they themselves set. And it looks like it could potentially have some harm going down the road, there's an investigation that's currently going on into Samsung device solutions regarding how the reporting is happening on this, even though Samsung's saying it's not really such a big deal, but we could have more supply chain issues coming down the line because of that. But AMD thinks that because of 3D Vcash, they're going to top the charts yet again. And at ISSCC, they debuted at least a little bit more details with regards to their 3D Vcash design, which in case you don't remember, we're waiting to find out it, how well it does in games when it's implemented into to the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, but don't worry, they didn't give the release date for that. Why would they tell us a consumers, you know, over a month and a half, nearly two months later after they said it's coming later? Yeah, we're just not getting any details, but in case you're interested in the technical aspects of how the 3D Vcash is working, how it's cut down, what nanometer production it's based on, you can check all of that out at the link in the video description. And I really want to check out the PSVR 2. We have a video for this coming 
coming out on UFD Tech, but I really, really wanted a really good PlayStation VR headset, and that does not exist. The PSVR one was awful. It had so many limitations, and we've seen that the spec sheet, at least on the PSVR 2, does look to be pretty good. But now we've got the design coming out, Sony unveiling this yesterday. You can see that it's actually fitting within the design aesthetic of what the PlayStation 5 looks like, and it does have differentiated controllers. It has flatter sides, but also more rounded edges. But one of the things that they want you to know is that it has different ways that you can adjust the eyes it's going to make it so that you can swap between people and change the pupil uh, distance so that you can actually enjoy vr the way that you want to enjoy it as well as including a vent on the headset so that you can get rid of all of that brow sweat that just collects right here while you're trying to kill some zombies and freaking vr you can't and then it just drips down into your eyeball and it starts to burn and then you have to close that one eye and then you die in the game i'm just i'm just saying it's it's a good thing that you don't have to sweat as much in your vr helmet and it's a good thing you don't have to wait any longer for crypto stocks, Bitcoin up 2.5% on the day to be at 38.212, Ethereum up 1.2% to be at 26.33, and Dogecoin up 1.1% to sit at 13.1 cents. Not a whole lot of movement in the crypto market, not so much uh, news as I can tell, there's not a whole lot happening as of yesterday. So let's move on to talking about some moving that you could potentially do in an electric vehicle. This is probably one of the regular EVs that I'm most excited for, the Kia EV6 it looks to be at a great price point. Kia is a manufacturer that seems to actually be on the up and up, especially with all of their new re-releases that they're doing. And they're announcing that they're gonna give free super, uh, super charging or free uh, level three charging to anybody who wants to use the Electrify America network up to a thousand kilowatt hours for three years, which can equate to about 3,500 to 4,000 miles, depending on how you drive your EV6. This is a helpful addition. Free charging on road trips is definitely gonna be a good seller for people who might not have been considering an EV6. This is something that would get me to consider switching to an EV6 over, say, what is more of a regular consumer level. I mean, what else is there? It's kind of like the Mach-E, a cheap version of that, the cheapest Model 3, I'm kind of waiting for more competition to kind of enter into this sphere, but Kia doing the right thing, at least in my opinion with that. And Google trying to keep you on their stuff with the right moves. They're making it so that you can actually manually add passwords to its password manager that's in Google. Google Chrome, which is something that you couldn't do. I haven't used my Google Chrome as a password manager. I use a third party one, but I didn't know that it had this limitation and it's good to see that they're fixing that. They're also fixing some of the issues that YouTube has with regards to trying to be multi-platforms in the same platform, like when it comes to YouTube Shorts, when it comes to live streaming, and then when it comes to the actual videos, they're making it now a little bit more live focused so that if you actually see a creator on a homepage, there might be a little ring around them telling you that they are live in case they are live streaming at the time that you're seeing the video. I actually think that this is a really good move by YouTube for actually promoting their live streaming a little bit more. It gives just that little extra bit of a notification to let you know, hey, maybe come check out some of the creators current content that's happening. Uh, we'll see how this develops, but it's rolling out to YouTube near you. What's rolling back is Bethesda. They are announcing that they're shutting down the Bethesda.net launcher and everything is not moving to the Microsoft Game Store like you would think because they got acquired by Microsoft. Rather, it's all moving over to Steam, which is actually is kind of a strange move considering the acquisition. Maybe they just believe that Steam is better for the time being and, you know, Microsoft doesn't actually want to fight with competing with Steam. I don't, um, I, if you have a better explanation of why this is happening, please leave it down below in the comments. But in case you have your Bethesda.net library, you can migrate it over to the Steam by connecting your accounts to it. They are going to be rolling this out in early April and then this will be completed by late May. But them saying that if you have any questions specific to Fallout 76, okay, there's gonna be a fact for that, okay? You three people out there, don't you worry, Bethesda's not gonna leave you high and dry. So your game progression and saves should migrate on over to your Steam account. All of your currency should migrate as well, but they don't care about console people, so you're only gonna be able to migrate over on Steam with the PC. You cannot migrate to PlayStation or Xbox only Steam, nothing else. That's what about Fallout 76? The <laughs> Who cares? And who cares if I continue this episode of Hot News? Not me, because I'm done. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you for some more tech news later tomorrow, but don't forget to come join us for meme review over on our Twitch channel linked in the video description. Would love to have you there. Cheers.